Y'all know the vibes, Reasons to Podcast, you heard? Um, were you not trying to mess up? Don't say you're not trying to mess up your hair. No, no. I was about to say. I wore headphones for time. You know? <laughs> I thought you were trying to mess up your hair. I was about to say, you're, be, you're, you're <laughs> being bougie as hell, bro. Oh, yeah, calm. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Is it calm? Not too loud? All good, all good, all good. You can hear me. Yeah, calm, 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 calm. You know, this is the first time I've started a, I've started a pod and I'm not drinking like, let's say like a Maggie or something. <laughs> I'm drinking coffee. It's morning, 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 morning times. Jody got me out here on an early one, like it's bloody, like we're doing, I don't even know. What lesson would you do in school, like early morning? Science. Science. Or science. <laughs> we're doing like a double science right now, like literally, bro. It's top of the top. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's about, God knows what o'clock, 10, 15 a.m. I've never done a session this early, but of course, I have a very special guest. So for special people, you got to do special things. You know, you got to come in early. Jody had me up from bloody nine o'clock. I was out last night, not being the best of role models, but sure. here I am today. <laughs> I live to tell the tell. But um, welcome back, people, of course. It's been a long time. Um, of course, life's been happening. I'm sure you can relate. So things have been um, a little bit busy, but here I am today. But of course, today's a great shit special. If you know what I mean, then you know what I mean. Because we've got Jody Jones in the building. Don't even know where to start with this. But I've seen, man, probably one of the most... You know, sometimes people have raw talent and then there's people that work hard for their talent. But this this one here was just born with it like this. And I know I'm going to shower you with compliments, but you have to admit, you have to admit you was born with it. <laughs> do you reckon you... Do you believe you was born with it? Yeah, of course. I've worked harder growing up, but... Like you said, yeah, when I was younger, I was just born with it, man. Yeah, nah, because with, with this... You know what the funny thing is? I'll, I'm going to let him introduce himself, but I'm going to keep telling him what I can for now because, like, sometimes, of course, you have you have your Messi's and you have your Ronaldo's, and this is more on the Messi route of things, in my... In, what, do you, what do you think? Do you think you're more on that side or Ronaldo's side? I feel you're... The last three years... It's been more the Ronaldo side because I've been injured for a minute, but yeah, yeah. Like you said before, it was just more of a gifted thing, just from my dad's side of the family, man. Yeah, what well, was your pops? What was he left footed too? Yeah, man, and my little brother's left footed. Left footed too. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow, yeah. Your family was best, man. But give us a little, <laughs> just a uh, a little intel to you know who you are and what you do. Yeah, well, you said my name's Jody Jones. Twenty three now, mm -hmm. growing up quick, man. But yeah, I play for Coventry City. We're in a championship now. I think when I went there first, yes, yeah, son. Was in League One, but. We went down to League Two, back up to League One, back to the Championship. But yeah, I've been at Coventry for a minute now. I was at Dagenham and Redbridge at first. Yeah, yeah. And then before that, I'd probably say I was an East Side football player with you. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, man. You was breaking people's ankles, making grown men look young, putting the top bins against me nonstop, by the way. No behaviour, literally no behaviour at all. Um, but of course, where did you start before? Before uh, Dagnam Rivers, where were you before that? So I started with a Sunday league team, mm -hmm. Simrab, you all know about them. A lot of people were there. And just had loads of teams interested in me from then, interested in me from then, really. But then I think it was a decision from my mum and dad and my godfather. They just didn't want me to, to leave and just get pushed out straight away. They wanted me to just have fun because obviously you're young at the time. Yeah, nah. And then I definitely knew that was the right decision when I went to Arsenal when I was about. 10, 11, because I didn't like it straight away. It just went fun. It was like how the adults game is now. Yeah, yeah. The way they were speaking to man and stuff like that. And obviously at the time, because I was the one that was new there, it was all the other players that were there were kind of there from six or seven. And because I was the new one, I was just a bit unconfident. And then I didn't really like it. I was there for about a year. Then mm -hmm. I went to West Ham. I was there for like a year as well. But I just, just for some reason, I just went enjoying football when I was at places like that. But then like with Bishop with the school team and stuff, our team was, was mad. Yeah, no, I saw, I definitely yeah. saw some highlights. I saw some goals, yeah. some crazy cheekiness. I think there was one clip in, in in particular, the way you told someone from the halfway line, no, you know what I'm talking about already? Yeah, far, innit? Yeah, far. You told someone from the halfway line, watch, 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 and you just smacked it from the halfway line, easy money, there you go, in the back of the net, let's start again. Like, yeah. whatever they, I don't know what the scoreline must have been, but that one must have definitely killed every team's confidence, like, or every player has his confidence. No, yeah, I remember that game like like it was yesterday. We was battering them. Like we used to beat every team by a lot. But I said to Paul, I called this. I'm just obviously I'm gonna put it in the top bins. 
And so many people said this guy did not mean that, but obviously Pa didn't get the bill on record when I said to him. Yeah, yeah. It. But Pa knew, Pa knew I told him. Yeah, no, with your, with your personality, man, I knew, I knew, I knew what the, what, what, the, what happened minutes before that. You definitely must have said, yeah, man, put it on record, bro. I got this, man. And obviously, like going from school football into then academy level, I know you're already saying that you didn't understand, uh, what do you call it, you didn't really enjoy it too much, yeah. but... um. Like, what was the the difference in in mentality? Of course, I know that you you're you're a young boy, but you went into like a more of a men's game. Like, how did you how did you find changing like your mentality in the sport? Because I'm sure before then you probably assumed that football was mainly just you know feet. Yeah. But then you had to get the mind game level. What was that like? It was hard, man. Obviously, we've just grown up playing in cages or power league. You know what I'm saying? It's just people are smashing you in the fence. So I kind of had that not strength, but I was used to kind of getting thrown around. Yeah, yeah. Like in Devons, anywhere, wherever I played, I was used to kind of getting thrown around because I was smaller than everyone as well. But with a school team, our school team was crazy. Like, And obviously going to Dagenham and Redbridge at first, I was a scholar, so we had like an under-16s to under-18s team. And my school team was probably better than them. Like, we, no disrespect. Hey, we, no disrespect. We probably respectfully, respectfully, like, respectfully. We had too many sick players, man, like some people that should still be playing now. But just whatever happens, happens. But our school team was crazy. And obviously with that... I kind of just had like a free role to kind of do what I want and move where I want on the pitch. And yeah, as soon as I went to, to Dagenham, it was kind of like my my coach at under 16 level to under 18, his name was Micah Hyde. Mm -hmm. Sickest coach, like sickest manager as well, man. Like he used to play for Watford back in the day and stuff, but him, he just changed me differently. He just had me doing things that I wouldn't have done. And he just, had, like, I don't know, just the stuff that he would make you do, what he was teaching us just seemed too good for Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah, yeah. Without being disrespectful. Like, this, this guy was was so good. But yeah, at the same time as well, like his son played for us as well. And you see sometimes if your dad's the manager and that people will just like, just yeah. be so super nice to the Yeah, son. yeah, like, yeah. He, that's the, he wasn't like that. He was just real the whole time. Like literally, if his son did something wrong, he would have told him, but. Like no bias, literally. Yeah, when it went to that, it was kind of like at Dagenham. At first, I wasn't like, the golden child whereas in school and stuff I'd always been the golden child so what was that like as well then going from you know being the one that everybody looks to exactly, to then yeah. just being the, another you know team member because I went to Dagenham late I think one of my friends just told me to come and I went there and I just went to play football and then people started noticing how oh, this guy's like he's decent at football kind of thing and then after I think about six months I started like being myself everything started coming off and that's when they started knowing oh this guy's good and then I became the main player in my team I was playing like 45 minutes or maybe 70 minutes for the under 16s. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd run over to the other pitch and play the last 20 minutes for the under 18s and that scored a winning goal for them and that. So it was kind of mad. Yeah, and that's yeah. when I was playing against levels, like levels. big people that was miles bigger than me. So it was hard, but I just had to get used to it. But with first team level now, it's a completely different game. But um, before we get into the, the first team level, you know, you were just saying how, of course, the, your, your school team had like obviously a lot of talent in it but it didn't go you know some way for some uh, for some people and of course there's a i'm sure there's a difference between you you're cut from a different cloth compared to your peers of course and obviously what would you say that is and and or or what would you say like um what it takes to get to your level wh where they things that they could have done yeah. that it didn't what would you, what were those tiny little things that you done that they didn't there's a few things because there's some people that have done everything right but they just didn't get the opportunity yeah or didn't have the right people to take them to training and stuff like that whereas me i didn't either but i was blessed with my godfather because my mom and dad had me so young and obviously they was working grafting and my godfather he's at the stage of where he can retire so he could kind of choose when he wanted to go into work and stuff but like i said he would take so much time out and take me to football here there everywhere and that's what i'm saying without him it just would never have happened I like, know disrespect to anyone that like my mum and dad, they was young and they had to do what they had to do. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I'm pretty sure they would have found a way to take me if he could in any way, but without him, it wouldn't have happened. So some for some it's opportunity and for some it's just, it's quite sad because at that age of like 16, that's the time when you like chilling with your boys. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You start, the... you start going to parties, all of that. And you, I remember when I used to go Dagenham training, I used to come back, get dropped back to Devon by my godfather and all my mates would be chilling in Routon Park. Uh, you know the shop with the diamond up. Yeah, yeah. Everyone would be chilling there, and I'd have my Dagnum tracksuit on. Just come back from training, I say, "Oh, just drop me off here," and I'll just chill till like half eleven. And when I look back at that now, I just think, "What was I even doing? Like, what was the point of that?" Because you don't want to miss out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's what you feel like. Or say if you're fifteen, sixteen, and you're talking to a girl, and she's going to a party, and you don't want to go because you've got training the next day or a game. But 
you're thinking, oh, like, I want to go because she's there. Yeah. So stuff like that, you have to miss out on. And I missed out on so much. Like, it's, ch- ever, it's did childish you? stuff, like 15, 16, like residentials. I missed out on all that stuff. Mm. Like, Goffier Cup with Ace, Par and all that. I missed out on all that. Oh, like, you didn't? I thought you went Goffier. No, nah, man, that hurt me. Like, when I, when I couldn't go there, I was sad because obviously I was with Dagnum then. You can't yeah, just yeah. go and play for another team. But even before that as well, there was always a motive every Friday, Saturday. And I was just never, I was, if you asked all them, like, I was the one that was never really there. Yeah, I know. But I, and obviously, like, you should be credited for that because that's the that's the toughest part of the game yeah, is missing out on those things. But of course, obviously, you can make it back. But th- those are like, you know, I'm sure you sit back home, you're watching the socials and et cetera. And you're growing up in a time where, yeah. man, socials is your, you lot's bread and butter like 24 seven. So mm. like, um, would you say that like, that was one of the main factors that like possibly like pushed back some of your peers that could have made it? Um, People getting like caught up in little things. Yeah, you could. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just there's so many different things. Like obviously opportunity, like I said as well. But that definitely, yeah, man. Just like stuff like that, people just. But what I think is sad is because at that age you don't think like I need to work hard to get where I want to get. You just think your talent's gonna get you there. And everyone would say my talent got me there. My talent did. Ninety percent of it did. But the other ten percent, I did work hard. I was going training Friday nights when that was the key day where everyone would link up. Hundred, hundred. But at the same time, my mum as well. She was onto me, man. Like she knew what I was gonna become, and she just. You know when you've obviously she she's she she had me and she knew from young. She says to me now, I knew all you wanted to be was a football player. So for me to see you be anything else, I'd still be proud of you, but I'd be sad because I know that was your dream. So she was on to me like if there was a party, like I'll be real, she wouldn't let me go. And that was and then I kind of got to a bit of an age where like you got used to it. Yeah, I got used to it, but at the same time, I could kind of choose if I wanted to go out now because I'm older. And she was like, well, it's up to you, but if you get caught up in that stuff, anything could happen. You could be in the wrong place at the wrong time and stuff like because I've been in the wrong place at the wrong time so many times mm-hmm. and, I've, and I've been like let off lucky and I'm like that's it now I need to I need to just focus on football and stuff like that but yeah my mum was on to me from time and then I just kind of made the decision myself you know because I can I can I always say man without sacrifices there's literally zero change there's zero zero change and I can see that in you I can see that you had to go and, and make those decisions sometimes and not go out and of course um with saying that it's like even I have friends that have, could have been ballers, yeah. but they stayed at that extra time. And like you said, they got caught wrong place, wrong time and, and whatnot. And um, yeah, obviously it's a shame, but 110% credit to your mum, credit to your to your godfather. And um, I was going to ask for like the younger listeners that are 14, 13, 12, in school, etc. that follow you. I know you've got a decent following. Yeah. I'll call it support more. It's not even fans, it's exactly, a support yeah. um, system in Coventry. Like what would you say to them, the, the guys that are going through that current phase right now, like, what would be your main advice? The main thing I would say is like, it's, it is to do with football, obviously, but the main thing is family at the end of the day. I remember my first manager said to me, Wayne Burnett, I remember there was a problem with my mum and he said to me, go home. He said, your family is way more important than football. And we had a big game the next day and he wanted me to play as well. And he said that to me, family is way more important than football. But to me, football was my life. So that made me start thinking, you know what, that's true. but. The one thing I'd say, a lot of people growing up in London as well, they've seen their mum and dad, their mum or their dad struggling. If their mum's single, they've seen their mum struggling. A lot of us have. You have a chance to change their life. Like, if you're good at something, just do it, man. If you think about it, if you've got a chance to change your parents' life, like how hard they've struggled and them grafting, you've seen your mum coming home at seven o'clock at night, tired, like, and you've got to start the washing so that obviously when they come back, they can't do it all. You have to yeah, start, yeah. Start, put, start putting the food on and stuff. Stuff like that. If you know you can change your parents' life or you've got little brothers and sisters and it's been a hard time, all of you in the same house and stuff, if you keep grafting and grinding, just, just don't waste your talent, man. Like, yeah, man. You... I've seen a lot of people waste it. Like, and I even see the, the thing about Ravel Morrison, about how good he was. And yeah. I've, I've seen how good he was. Like, It must be so painful for him to hear people say that he could have been this and could have been that. 100%. And like I said, that's not all he's for either. Like, well, I think man you should have helped him a lot more but like i said if you have a chance to change in your family's life that's surely that must excite you yeah no big words 100 percent, big true, words man. i cannot um deny that and what would you say like uh the one thing that you did different compared to others i know you said 90 percent talent 10 percent hard work but what was with like what was inside that 10 percent that was different everyone loves football a lot of people i grew up with love football but nobody loved it more than me it's a fact. No one knew it more than me. Like, if there was a motive and it was a big motive that everyone was going to, but then somebody said, we can go Mably tomorrow and play football. I'm there. I'm at Mably playing. 
I was in the cage every morning. Like I would come back from, I'd play in League Two for Dagenham, like professionally, and then go Sunday in my LM football. Yeah, that's no, how no, yeah. I still remember. That. I, to be honest, I used to think that you was being risky with that too. But of course, you love the game, so you do what you gotta do. That's what. That's how much my first manager said to me: Stop playing in cages. Stop going home from training and playing in cages. You're a professional football player now. He said the reason why I think you're so good is because you played in cages and your footwork is crazy. But you need to stop doing that. But see me, like I weren't trying to hear it. Anything to do with football, like, I wouldn't disrespect anybody. But I weren't listening. Football, I'm there. Like I've been to communions. I've been to 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 weddings and stuff like that and I've ended up finding a football somewhere <laughs> and getting, getting everybody to play you know what I mean getting everyone to play but that's I, I just think I loved it a lot more than a lot of people I always had a football with me I've worked hard well I've had to work hard the last three years anyway with injury I've never had to work so hard but I think that's just a, a blessing in disguise man and everything happens for a reason because like I said it was just talent and I didn't really have to work hard for my talent and there's no way you can go through life without working hard. So, hundred percent. I've had to work hard now, and now I know what it's about, and that's it, man. And of course, now you're you're in first team football now. Of course, congrats for uh, uh, getting your team promoted. You was obviously you also helped out. Thank you. Um, so I've noticed that you had your ACL injury. Had to do a bit of extra research, um, and of course, that especially during the pandemic, it's even worse to have to deal with that now because there's, you can't, I'm sure it's literally just home and gym, home and gym and no other extras. You can't even go to a special place here mm -hmm. and a special place there. Like, and um, you speak about it a, a lot on, you know, how, how that's had its effects and you've had your support, but um, like what, uh, how would you say that you, you've handled it? Because obviously this must be something completely new to you. I know, you, I know you've had injuries when you was young, mm -hmm. but this must be to a different level. Yeah, th this is the deep side of it, man. Like, People always say to me, like, oh, you've got it nice, man. You're good. you got a good income. you got a nice house. Like, But all of that gets thrown out the window when you get injured. If I was injured for a month, then it's a different story. But that's what I'm saying. When people say stuff like that, I just can't hear it. Like, I don't listen to it because just because of that, it don't mean, like, that's not everything. Do you know what I mean? When I got injured the first time. um, What year was that? 2018, right? I think so, yeah. And it was in November. So there was a lot of transfer talk around my name. But mm -hmm. see me, I didn't even care about that because like I said, I love football so much. I remember when my godfather rang me and said, uh, I've got some good news for you. And I was like, okay. And he was like, our oh, leads are trying to buy you for a certain a million pound, whatever. And he was like, you don't sound happy. I was like, I'm not bothered. Like, I just I just want to play football. And I was so happy at the time because I was having a season of my life. I was going out on the pitch just enjoying myself every single game as if I was playing at Eastside. Yeah, yeah. I was just having so much fun. And then, to be fair, like I didn't, at the time I was sitting there and I was thinking, do I even want to go? Like I'm loving it at Cov, like I've just settled, like but I don't want to keep moving about because when I had to leave London for Cov, I was gutted. Was it your first season that you got your hat-trick as well? Or was that your second season? Uh, my second, because the first one I kind of went halfway through. Okay. But I, I was on loan, but I was, or, or was always signing at the end, but I kind of went in Feb, so there's about f two, three months left. Okay. Then yeah, obviously I was doing well then. Just in one game, I remember my agent said to me before, he said, I wouldn't really tell you this before a game in case it makes you change the way you're going to play, but I'm just letting you know that all these teams are coming to watch you, like Everton, Man City, loads of different teams. But like I said, I didn't change the way I played or anything. Uh, I was having an okay game, and then my knee, man, just uh, something I've never felt before, because I've never had a bad injury. I'm just used to getting kicked. That's yeah, yeah. Times it comes with your game, game, really. It comes exactly. with your game. But no one's even touched me, and I've just felt... Honestly, the way I've described it, it's like somebody just shot me in the back of my knee. It was horrible. I was down for ages. Um, I was on the floor. I see the stretcher coming on and all that stuff. And then I kind of like, I was there for a minute and the pain kind of went away. And I was looking up and I just see like, you know, all the scouts just walking out. Yeah, yeah. One by one, just all walking out. And I thought, like, this is just my luck, man. But then, um, yeah, after that, I found out. I was in the hospital for ages. It was just taking long because obviously I weren't in COVID. It was in Stevenage. So we didn't have that private kind of healthcare thing. And I remember finding out from my physio that I did it and I just broke down and I was in bits. I was living in a digs like, with a family in Cov. Yeah, yeah. And I thank them every time if they watch this. Like, thank you so much. They looked after me, proper looked after me, man. And you don't really get a good supportive digs like that either. So I was kind of lucky. I was there, they helped me out. But that was when I was at my lowest, man. Like not being able to play football. I would have took, I would have deducted all my wages, everything I've got. I would have given away my car, everything just to play football again. Cause that's when it made me realize it hit me. Like it's, it's not money and stuff like that. You don't need all that stuff. Just whatever makes you happy. That's what you need to do. And obviously for, for me to be out for nine months, 
Bro. You know, it, you, I'm I'm 100 sure that you must have been in the dark for quite a long like, time. I wasn't even with my family either. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I said, the Diggs people they were becoming family because I was so close with them. But I still didn't have my own family there. You know what I'm saying? And obviously they had to work. They couldn't take time off to come and just sit with me yeah, to make just, me happy. I'm yeah, a big, yeah. I'm a big man. You know what I mean? But yeah, that that killed me, man. I was at the lowest I've ever been. Because obviously football is like, like it's a very glorious sport. So that's the people see you know they see the, the celebrations the goals and etc but the dark part is the injuries the dark part is the bad form the dark part is you know being uh, not handled in the limelight and it wasn't even a case of you not handling but you just got put in a situation that you couldn't handle but of course, i always say that you know god doesn't put you in a position that you can't handle and from now like you i think you've been injured i think what like isn't it two years a year and a half no longer now so all together it was maybe about 26 months Okay. Because in total it was, but obviously I, I came back and had spells where I was playing and I managed to do the same thing again. And then I done it on the other knee because they always, well, I don't know if it's a fact, but people always say, if you do it on one side, you're going to end up doing the other side. So like for me now anyway, it's just, I'm just onwards and upwards, man. I'm positive. Like I've got this attitude now that everything happens for a reason. And it happened to me when I was, before I hit 23. Yeah, yeah. If it happened to me when I was 28, that would be long. But do you think that they, it's like, uh, not even do you think, like, do you, uh, like I, I've, I don't think football in itself doesn't have like a place for this sort of conversation or like I know clubs off, offer physiotherapy. I don't know the insides and outs of Coventry mm. or any other club. I know um, Lingard most recently also spoke about yeah, being in the dark, not having somebody to, spoke to, uh, to speak with. I yeah. forgot who passed away in his family, but I remember hearing that someone passed and etc. Yeah, but course. what do you think uh, is missing from from football that uh, is not there right now? I'm sure I, I know obviously not not no digs at. at um, commentary and I'm saying this respectfully but what do you think is, is missing because this part of the game you don't really get told about this part of the game mm. so there needs to be way more awareness there needs to be way more like sessions classes etc for because yeah. we can't just rely on this on the socials and the fans to just tell you get well soon pat on the back etc yeah. but the would you uh, now if, if you would you say that now you're you're in a much better place of course yeah of course. and you got there with the with the help of people yeah. um coaches family etc but what do you think could have could have helped you in those moments to be fair to Coventry, like they got they got somebody in that could, that we could speak to and stuff like that. But sometimes you just don't really you don't really want to talk. Do you know what I mean? So maybe if there was like some like like you said like little classes or something like that that came maybe once every two weeks that just made you a bit more confident about speaking. Because for me myself, I know I didn't speak to the the lady that came in every Thursday or what day she came in. I would just I would just brush it. I'd never go because I was, I just think I don't want to talk about it, man. It makes me too sad. Like it's depressing, man. But you're never prepared for anything, but now that this happened to me, it would be nice if people were prepared before something like it did happen. Yeah, yeah. Not to make them think, oh, that could happen to me one day, but, you know, like, just little things. Like, for example, you see what happened to Ericsson the other day? Yeah, yeah. You see now everyone's putting out the posts about how to put someone in a recovery position. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know people are taught that, but why everyone, everybody's sharing it now, now that it's happened? So they wait for something to happen and then and then they'll start doing it. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it takes for a football player to 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 end up without being horrible, end up taking their own life for people to start saying, let's put this into place. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? But stuff like these injuries and being injured for nine months, it make it puts you in that position where you don't. It's deep, but it puts you in that position where you don't want to be around anymore, bro. Like it makes you feel so for nine months, and then you're in the gym working, and everyone else is just outside. And you see, you see me without digging at anyone. I work harder than everybody. Like that I play with, I promise you, because maybe I wouldn't have if I didn't get injured, but the last three years I have 100%. And then when you've worked, when you know you've worked the hardest and you see people outside training, yeah, you're happy for them, of course, but it just hurts even more because you've worked so hard. And because I've had to do the same thing three times, it killed me, man. But the only thing I can do is just look onwards and upwards, man. There's always someone worse off, bro. There's people that... that 100%. This madness is happening to them. Do you know what I mean? Like, what's happened to me is it's a minor... Like, I'm still alive, I'm still healthy, my family's good. But I would never have thought like that before. So this stuff has matured me and just made me a better person anyway. Yeah, I, I believe it's also going to improve your mental side of the game now. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're going to be twice as... You're already cautious, but now you're going to be twice as cautious. Like, you understand the, the dark the, the dark side of the game. Yeah, of and of course, um, I was once told, like, uh, just through... In any school that you do, you're always going to be judged, etc. And people are always going to tell you things. It's up to you what you do with those words, yeah. but um, or with those moments. But I was once told, 
um, it was by Axe actually that told me this. He said to me like, um, the feeling that I had when someone doubted me or when someone made me feel a certain way, live in that feeling, like, but make sure that like you don't hold it, like you, you don't stay in it to the point of like, oh my God, like feel sorry for me, but no, to like, to make sure that, okay, you know what, if that's, if that's how they feel, yeah. I called them, let me show them how I feel. Mm -hmm. Or let me, let me express myself now. Yeah. Like, and that's, that's why I believe you're gonna go next because yes, you've been in the dark, Yes, you've had your injuries, but I can't. I can't imagine your your drive as a footballer now. I can't imagine what you're willing to show now. Like, if people thought that you banged at top bends, people thought that you you was cool back then. Your your cuttings, your attitude, etc. I'm sure that now you're onto an even bigger path. Like, if it was it if it was Leeds that was up um, that was after you next, man, it might be City now. Then it might be Chelsea now. Then mm. because I'm sure you're you got that mentality now of like okay, because now I'm sure that now you feel like. I'm a footballer now, I get it. Yeah. I, I know what it takes because I'm sure everybody wants to get to your position and yeah. everybody wants to be you, but at the same time, they don't know what like what it's like to be here and et cetera. Now you, now you know the full scale of the game yeah. and you can really drop the full game to the kids and then be like, yo, like, you sure you want to do this? Mm -hmm. Because it's not just get on the pitch, go for a, a jog or whatever, be in the change room with the lads, our, our interview, signing autographs. The part that you learn is the part that you never, you, obviously you had no experience of. Real. But um, what I have to ask you is like, what what drives you now as a footballer? Family, family, everything, man. It's it would be too painful for me not to fulfil my potential, and my family know how good I am at football. Like I said, I've got little my little brother. I've got two little brothers now, and my my little brother, one of them had a communion yesterday. One of them got baptised yesterday. They both love football already. One plays for Leighton Orient, and you know what I'm saying. He, he's so sick Grind as well, up. but. You see, for him to just have a role model like me as well, he he like he wants to be me. Do you know what I mean? He loves me so much. Like when he sees me, he can't even like handle himself. He just so, he's so be so silly because he just wants to impress me. And he, he, even my dad says because obviously I don't get to see him all the time. That's that's another hard part as well. You don't get to see your family all the time. But my dad said he just he literally just wants to be like you. So just to, because I'm a role model and I just I just want to keep that status. Yeah, yeah. Of, of not even being that guy, just to be that guy that people look up to. Not the guy that's just got this, got that. Do you know what I mean? Forget the materialistic things. Even hundred percent. I'm glad. I'm nice. glad you got there. I'm glad you got there. Yeah, because at first I can't lie. You see, at first you just think, yes, I can get this, I can get that, and yeah, I have nice things, but I don't buy twice as many of the things I used to buy mm -hmm. before. Because, like I just said, it just that's why I, it would sound weird, but at the same time, I'm not too stressed that these injuries happened to me because that three years it was a lot of learning, a lot of learning. I've done so much stuff, and it's made me. I've always loved my family, but it's made me love them even more. And it makes me just want to show them. And just like you said, what Axe said, you see, I thrive off that. If somebody doubts me, <laughs> doubt me, go on. Because people doubt me on the pitch. You see the other team's managers, they'll say, show him when he's left, he's left-footed, he's only left-footed, he can only go one way, but I'll still go left and, oh, beat, mate, and beat the left back. 110 if you see a lot of my goals, 110 percent. If you see most of my goals, I've cut inside and scored. And players that I've played against that I know, their manager says before the game, don't let him go on his left foot. And but it, it's still and when I do it, they'll go crazy. I'm sure you practice that like ten times. Yeah, I do. That's what I'm saying. Another thing, I stay out long. I stay out by myself all the time and practice, practice, practice. When I do something, and people say, "Bro, how do you do that?" I just think you can do that as well if you stay outside and practice, but you don't want to. You know what I'm saying? I'm there to work hard because I also think as well, man. I'm happy where I came from and where I grew up because no offense to anywhere else, but like you see, like even when I went to Dagnum or in Coventry, they don't have the mentality that we have. Yeah, yeah. Or what we had growing up because it's different there, man. I just feel like London's just such a harder area to grow up in. Hundred percent. And it's so tough. It's it's, it's just. But so, it builds so you. Much growing up. It, it builds, builds you. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't be the the person that I was today. I was the softest out of all of my my lot. I was the softest. Like everyone used to say, "Oh, you're the pretty boy." Boom, boom, whatever. I was the softest guy. But you see, just even when you're younger, like you're younger and you're running around and then the olders give you licks and that stuff like that. Strength, like it got mm -hmm. me stronger. Like you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying without them I wouldn't be where I am, but. All them little things add up to stuff that you forget about, and that made me a bit tougher. Cause on the pitch, like I was like a fairy man. Like I've never, I don't like getting tackled anyway. But I used to just pull out of everything. But all that stuff strength for me as well. Playing yeah, in yeah. the cage or playing at east side, and you know when you got everyone there, like even east side alone, you're getting kicks twenty. But then that that was building you because there was a point where you no longer like started having tantrums about exactly. getting kicked. You just exactly. you just took it because you understood the game. You understood that like, this player specifically is only just gonna be here just to give kicks. He's not even got a good pass on him, a good shot. He's just going to, and obviously that comes with your game. I was watching a few of your highlights, like games against like people, uh, Grimsby Town and and um, Notts County and stuff. Man, there was players that was just literally just kicking you nonstop. But I'm sure that's just, you need those scars, you know? Yeah, you need course. to know, 
you need to be able to feel those things in order to be able to go forward. It's the same way, like, you, you see your greats. I don't know um, which footballers you idolise, but it's like when Ronaldo first came in fresh, man. What game, that, that game against Millwall, he was getting kicked 24-7 throughout the league. Nobody understood him. He was getting kicked 24-7, but you got you got to go through those little bits in order to get to where you got to, man. And um, I'm sure, like, now you feel that you have something more to prove, like, more than ever. And... Um, would I would ask? Are you are you currently fit to go into your next season, to your new season? Yeah, li- as the, as we was coming to the end of this season, it was slightly annoying that the season finished because I was kind of re- just perfect. Yeah. Finish. So obviously we got pre season. I'm back in on Monday, and then literally from there it's just obviously the pre season's about probably six six weeks I think. Obviously pre season games, pre season training is hard. Once you get through that then you're good to go for the season. Because uh, there, there was that most recent goal that you scored. Don't remember the team. But it was uh, like a long a long shot. Um, was that, a, was that a, a reserve game or first team? That was f- that was the first team, but that was in pre-season last oh, season. Okay. So I just kind of came back around them times. So I scored that goal against Burton. And then the next game I scored against Peterborough when I ran and cut inside. So and it was annoying because I was just finding my form again. And obviously people doubted me because of my injuries. Is he going to be sharp? Is he going to be able to do what he was doing before? But... I was just proving people wrong even then in pre-season because I was still doing stuff. And I think that kind of helped me to get my new contract anyway because bef- I'd done my knee twice before that. Yeah, like yeah. Two goals. And I think they probably thought if he could do that after doing his knee twice, like, he still got it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, a lot yeah. of people don't after they do their knee. But every time I come back, I feel good still. I feel sharp. I feel young, like, energetic. I still feel like I've got everything. I feel like I ain't lost a thing at all. If anything, I've just got, I've gained because I've got stronger. Hundred percent. Like, what's your what's your proudest um moment in your career so far? Then, um, I have a few, man. So obviously, signing that professional contract, just knowing you're a professional football player. Just, yeah, that must feel. You know them dreams of just like being on FIFA and stuff like that. When you sign that pro contract, <laughs> you're on there, just stuff like that. That's that's just dreams, man. From 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 it's a an young, underrated one there. From a young boy, like obviously, it sounds. Do you buy yourself? All the time, man. Like, <laughs> you know what, actually? I, I had to, to ask that. I had to ask that. At the start, I used to, but then sometimes I'll start a career mode and I'll be playing and I'll think, wait, I didn't even sign myself. Like, <laughs> I just forgot now, you know what I mean? Because I've been on it for quite a, quite, a, quite a minute now, but yeah, that playing at Wembley in front of 74,000. Yeah, yeah. Mad. 100%. Like, what does that feel like, by the way? It's hard to describe it, man. You just, I don't know, you just... Does it, does it give you extra, like, boost or does it, like, make you cautious? You see me, like, I thrive off of, off of things like that. 74,000, I'm thinking, yes, I'm showing all of them what I can do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But at the same time, before the game, no one can say they're not nervous. I don't care who you are. Like, th- there might be, I don't know, because then people like Ronaldo, look what he does in the big games. Every yeah. Game. But for us to walk out in front, because like, 74,000 is, like, what you're getting at big games. Like, you see, like, Barca, like, mm. Champions League games. 74,000 is so many fans. And when you walk out, you just can't hear nothing. You just hear like a buzzing noise. Like, that's it. But yeah, Wembley playing there and then winning as well, that topped it off. If you didn't win, it would have been sad, but you played at Wembley. Like, yeah, man. All your family. I think I had like 70 tickets like for family members and friends and they all came to watch and it was like a childhood dream, man. Obviously, Wembley's not too far from us, but it's one of the big close stadium stars. So to play there, that was lit as well, man. But other than that, the hat trick as well. Cause yeah, because... I was going to say the hat trick was very underrated because we have like a lot of professionals who, till this day, no matter where they started, doesn't matter if they started at, mm. already at the Prem, doesn't matter if they started at the conference, but they don't score hat tricks, bro. It doesn't come, in. mate. Marshall only scored his first hat trick just, just only, I think, what was it last season? Yeah. Um, there's big players that still haven't got that. And obviously, that alone is a very big accolade. Doesn't matter. It's not about the league because yeah, people true. love to come with this league nonsense because football's football. So, no matter what level you scored a hat trick in, you scored a hat trick. So, and I, honestly, I, I was going to say, I was actually surprised. I didn't know you had to score the hat trick already. I saw the goals um, yesterday and I was like, oh shit. Like, that, that, ma- that match ball, you must look at that every day and be like, yeah, like, I'm going to times this about 100 real soon. Do you know what it is? It's just like, I was never really a goal scorer too much. I used to just set up goals and just do skills on the pitch just nutmeg people all yeah that, yeah oh, that, i can't forget that all of that stuff like i just used to do all that and that's one thing i never really had in my game like scoring enough goals i'd score an important goal in a big game but if we played against a team and we won like 13 no i wouldn't score but then if we won 2-0 in a big game i'd score both do you know what i mean yeah yeah so when i scored that i remember that game obviously like it was yesterday we had pre-season i wasn't in the starting team and for like the last few games in pre-season, so my head was gone. I was just thinking, what's going on here? Like people were saying to me, why are you not playing? Like even my teammates, I was thinking, I don't know. Like what am I doing wrong? 
feel like I must be doing something wrong because my manager's a top manager. Yeah. And big up, man. Listen, he's he's had my back from the start, and like I can't wait to repay him anyway. But yeah. I, I see. Like, he's always spoken good words. Good yeah, words, by like, the way. I would never just think, "Oh, this guy, what's he doing? Why am I not playing?" He knows what he's doing. If you're not playing, it's for a reason. So, like I said, I just thought. I looked at my clips and I thought, "What am I doing wrong?" I feel like on the ball. I feel like I'm one of the best players on the ball. I can, I can create. I can do this. But I, f- I kind of put two and two together, and I thought, you know, it's my defensive side. I'm not working hard enough. And sometimes up, it might, up. it might look like I'm not working hard enough. But you see me. I'm such an attacking player. And I want to have all my je- energy when I'm attacking because I know I can do stuff that I can hurt any defence. I just I wasn't being lazy. I just I just thought I'm not really good at defending. So I started trying to work a bit hard defensively. Then in one of the last games before pre-season, I played in that game and I scored a good cut inside left foot. Scored and then I ended up being starting the first game. I remember I was quite nervous. We were playing Notts County. Kevin Nolan, who played for West Ham. Yeah, yeah. And he was their manager. And they was favourites to go up. Everyone was talking about them. Like they, and I was thinking, first game of the season, they've chucked us in the deep end here. Before the game, I'm ready to play. All my family's come to watch. It's at our stadium, big stadium. I'm ready to go out. I'm thinking, yes, I'm finally psyched. I don't feel nervous anymore. Then there was some lightning and stuff like that. So it got delayed by 15 minutes. <laughs> I thought, this is just going to be a long day, man. Then I remember I scored early, made it 1-0, and I was just thinking for the rest of the game, please, let's just blow the whistle. I wanted the game to finish. I was happy with one goal. I wanted it to be the winning goal. You know them ones, even if it sounds selfish, but even if we drew, it wouldn't have been a bad result. Yeah. And I'm happy that I've scored as well. That's a good start. I'm sure season. most professionals think that, man, reality. Yeah, of course. Like, obviously, obviously, the three points is so, is the most important thing, but I'm saying, at that, if it was against a team that wasn't favourites, I'd have been annoyed. But I would have taken a draw that day because of how everyone was talking about them. We knew it was going to be a tough game. And it was, we dominated the game, but they had a few chances as well. But yeah, then after the first one, I scored again. And I was just like, this is a, this ain't real, man. Then in, I wanted to, I remember I wanted to come off because my I was getting cramp because I hadn't played that many games in pre-season or as much time as everyone else. Then he made the last sub and it weren't me. And I was like, cool, we'll finish the game anyway. Then in the last minute, like I said, it's about that hard work. If you see on the video, I was knackered and I just, I sprinted a long way, a long, long way, overlapped and ended up getting a hat-trick. And I didn't even know what to do, bro, because I've never, I don't think I'd ever scored three goals in a game, except from probably... Like under 15. And they weren't easy free goals too. They weren't... I know, there was decent finishes and one was with my right foot everyone says I never used. So I was happy that I scored. That was the one I was happiest with. Yeah, no, that, that, that's that's definitely one moment. Like I was very... even. But you know what the funny thing was? It was, the, for me, the goal was the, the low shot bottom left and when you cut in from, when you came in from the right and okay. you scored with your left. That one for me was like where I thought, yeah, your game has gone, it's gone up still. Like yeah. you're, in, you're definitely in a different place, man. And um, uh, I got to ask as well, I had read this because <laughs> I like to do my extra intel. Not that I'm Sky Sports, but how do you feel about um, Malta doing some extra little, um, I think they're trying to get you to uh, play for them sometime. I know you're possibly going to go and play for England or for Malta. We don't know. But how do you feel about that? It's, it's a nice feeling, man. Um, obviously, a lot of my family are from Malta. Mm-hmm. Some of my family are from Jamaica as well. So that's an option too. It's an upcoming team, by the way. I know. Upcoming I've been, team. I've been saying it to one of my mates, Reese Charles Cook, because obviously... He's Jamaican as well, and he's been saying it for maybe three years now. Though he was saying, if everybody, you don't have to be fully Jamaican. Yes. But he was saying you, he was like himself, me. He was saying, obviously, because all you have to do is have a bit of that in you. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like my dad's side Jamaican, so got Jamaican in them anyway. So it's there. And he said to me, if all the actual people that have Jamaican in them played for Jamaica, the team would be mad. It would be mad. It'll be mad. But you know what it is? I think it would take take a while for it to become a team because. There'll be so many good individuals, but you see when you put individuals together now. There you go, talking you play, that stuff. You play against a team that's like, you see when England played against, no, not England. I said, well, I'm talking about England now. No, but look at Hungary, bro. When Hungary played against Germany, bro. Come on, that's a team. Like France, they are a team, but they've got so many individuals. that That's why I think that somebody like Germany or Italy would win this Euros because it ends up coming down to who's a team. But then again, again France are, are crazy anyway. But yeah, it's nice to have more interested. I speak with them quite a lot. Um... They've shown a lot of interest in me, but it's a thing where... Don't worry, you don't have to tell them. It's fine. It's fine. No, no. It's, fine. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a thing where it's just like, with the country thing now, if you represent another country, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, once wants to get that one cap, it's done. I but you can, but then you got like, um, I, f- I swear they say that friendlies are not capped. 
But I, I, I swear they are now. I think somebody said they are now. Because no, but look, look at Laporte. He just, he just, uh, he's playing for Spain now. He was just playing for for France like what two years ago, a year ago. Yeah, so you know more than me, man. <laughs> Laporte. I, um, I would do it. You know what I'm saying? I would do it. It's, it's a crazy feeling. And you see me, like I said, I dream so big that, and to some it would sound stupid, but I, 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 I know, I know that me fully fit and playing week in week out. You can do bits, man. I know that I could like appear for England one day but the team is so crazy now like my dad said to me the other day you could be good enough but it would be so hard to play even if it was for like under 23s I'd, have, I'd want to play for England because no, still a good team it's England still a good what? team and it's England as well yeah. do you know what I'm saying and I think I would have if I didn't get uh, injured but you can't look back at that stuff but my dad said to me he said you should really start considering it now because even with that England team now look how good Jack Grealish is and he's only just got called up and he's not even really starting either he said so he but could then be it, amazing, but it would still be hard. He was still he was still playing for Ireland though. He was playing under seventeens, yeah. I think, or under eighteens for Ireland. Yeah, but yeah. like with those things, obviously you can still go ahead and play like the 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 under the under the under twenty World Cups and stuff. And mm. uh, look at uh, what's his name. Even though I'm super upset with him, um, um, Angel Gomez, oh, uh, yeah. Portuguese, chose to go fight and play for fighting England. Don't know <laughs> fighting why. I was really, really waiting for this guy to one day go back to... I don't think he's going to do it. But um, you can also try things like that because obviously it's, it's, it's your discretion, isn't it? You, could, yeah, you can course. have options. But um, I think you should obviously follow your heart, man. If it's England, then it's England. But Jamaica, I wouldn't even sleep on them though because I 110% believe... I, um, I don't know what tournament that they play in. I don't know if it's... it's that Gold Cup or something like that. Yeah, it's like we're Australian then, man. And yeah, it's good. It's, it's a good level as well, man. But like, Definitely like get I said, it's... There's people like you know, do you know what stuff keeps me thinking that like, I see people like Jamie Vardy that only came in the Premier League at 26. Mm. That's what makes me think like I don't want to tie myself down to somewhere when there's still, still yeah like, man still got years. man you're 23 man. But then again you just don't want to be waiting around forever as well. So it's just a hard decision man. That's another thing with football decisions. Like it's, everyone thinks it's just easy being a football player. Decisions are hard, but no, I'm definitely gonna look into it more man because representing an international like a country that's that's amazing no i can't wait for that and obviously as well um what's your what's your um football like your favorite football number by the way i see that commentary gave you 10 mm. another thing i was like big up but is that is that your is that your number or you're seven i'm seven now but uh, but your preferred number my favorite number yeah oh, it, w- it would have been seven or ten but i think seven now i like seven a lot mm. just because it's just tens obviously a sick number if you've got number 10 then obviously everyone just knows that's a big number but I like seven, man. Just I'm used to seven now. Is there pressure with the number seven? There's pressure, yeah. So, numbers <laughs> like that, seven, ten. Seven, like ten, that. eight. There's pressure, yeah, but because obviously every new people coming in are gonna want that number. Okay, yes, you know yes, I mean? yes. And they're gonna ask for it, but you gotta you gotta try and keep that. You gotta keep. I think well. them little things there in a, in in a team in a changing room and training. That's what keeps like certain players yeah. at a certain level because you already know. You you love a seven. I love a seven. I come in. I know you got seven. I'm trying to mess you up by training as much as possible. I'm trying to make sure that you don't get no goals when you're playing. I'm and I come on. I'm trying to make sure I score before you. So next season I can request that. But I'm glad you got that as well, man. Hold that down. Make sure you keep that number seven, man, for yourself because I don't even want that for you to, um, for you to get taken that, taken that off you. And um, uh, what was I gonna say as well was, of course, like I know your main focus is football career pass, etc. But um in your spare time, what are the things that, that you get up to? What do you do? What do you like music wise, hobbies, etc. Do you have a, do you have like a hobby as well that might be people might be like, Really, Jody? Didn't expect it kind of thing. Um so there's a few to be fair. I like cooking. Mm-hmm. I like cooking a lot. Flavours man. All different stuff. Like what? All different stuff really like oh, but I have to shout my mum, my nan and stuff like that. Just you know, the sort of things that I would have been eating back down here, curry, chicken, mm-hmm. anything. No way you're making yeah, that. A couple of times, bro, I promise <laughs> you. I swear to you. But obviously it's not as good. But yesterday, like, I came down straight away because it was my brother's communion. Obviously, my dad patterned the food and that, like, curry. Goes. I was about Sweeties. to say. If... I've not had it for a minute. <laughs> mm. So it was just even better, man. I had to take some home. But, like, Cov, there's a few places like that, but... It's not the same as London, man. Yeah, I was gonna say, what's even even at the diet side of football? What's that like? Because I know you want to eat everything, and not everybody has the same metabolism. Mm. I'm blessed to be able to do and eat what I wish. Yeah. But how do you how do you manage that as well? It's hard because like you think about eating healthy, and then you think I'm just gonna eat pasta, chicken and pasta. Mm. But pasta, if you have too much of that, that sits on you. Do you know what I mean? So it's just you just gotta try and maintain a certain certain level, a, a certain diet as well, because. Yeah, we train every day and you just burn it off anyway. But 
think about it. If you're eating well as well, you just got to look at Can it. Can help you, your game? You just got to look at Ronaldo. That's yeah, it. exactly. Just I was going to, you went there, you went there without me having to say it, man. And um, I was going to say, of course, I see that you have a, you have a clothing line coming. Uh, what's the name of it? How did you get there? Um, like, does that, I'm sure your clothing line as well also helps you like mentally and, and, and psychologically, you know, yeah. because you're doing something a little bit different than, than just the game. Like, yeah. um, like, how did that come around? So like back to the hobby thing, all I used to do is just sit on my PlayStation. I'll be honest, PlayStation or I'd go and play football again. Or go and play foot golf, things like that involving football anyway. And then I've always been into clothes, like just like dressing, sometimes a bit different. Do you have uh, favourites? Favourite brands? Brand. Um, sounds like normal, but Nike, I love Nike. Everything I wear normally on a day-to-day -day basis. I was going to say, don't fuck up your sponsor, bro. No, it's, don't it's, fuck up your sponsor. it's Nike every day. I wear Nike all the time everything i've got is really nike then um the big brands are like just like gucci dior some of them I'm, I'm not really into big brands too too much i have a few bits and stuff like that but mainly i've got a lot of nike stuff because i don't really go out anywhere anyway even with covid and that as well but yeah and i just a few of my mates like ace was saying to me a long time ago he said you should start a clothing brand i said no i'm gonna focus on football all of that stuff and then obviously when i got the injuries that's when i thought you know what first time and second time first time weren't expected so i just got through it Second time, I weren't expecting it again. I got through it. But when I done it the third time, I thought, what am I going to do in this nine months? Like, I'm going to work hard, but maybe I should try and study something. Or, And I hated school and stuff like that, like mm. studying. I'm the worst at stuff like that. But but if it was to do with football, I'd be able to study it. Like, if we read a football book in school, I'd remember it and can't wait to read it the next day. I love the obsession, man. But you see, Honestly. When, when it's that one we did before our exam, like, of my and men, I'd, we'd read it, like, 10 days, bro. I promise you, the next day, I wouldn't even know the people's names and that. Like, it just go no, in there. Come on, you remember like, what... I one character, you got at least remember one character. What's his name? What's him with a big guy again? Lenny. Or something. Lenny. Yeah, you got at least remember, remember Lenny. That. That's about it. I remember that. I remember because me and Pa was in that same English class, and I just used to copy him all the time. And I know sometimes it used to annoy him. He used to think, bro, just listen. But I just couldn't. I was just, I was sitting there in my book writing, doing like starting a World XI eleven. Like yeah, yeah. Teams and stuff. Oh like that. my god, yeah, we all but did yeah, that, man. I just thought, you know, I want to start a clothing brand. I was sitting in bed, kept thinking of a name for like a week. I couldn't think of a name, and. The, the guy that made Manny Devoir, I know somebody that knows him and he said that he used to think of something like, say like a little quote, like dream big or something like mm. that. And he would translate it to different languages until he finds something that sounds good. So that's what Manny Devoir means something in a different language, but I forgot what it means. I couldn't think of a name, man. It was just too, it was just too hard. And I thought, I'm just going to give up. Then I thought of a name. I told my boy, my boy said, you're not going to believe it. Of where that I used to play football with quite long ago. He went, I've just started a clothing brand and he called it that same name. But he showed me his Insta, he'd had it for a minute and I just didn't know. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, what a coincidence. What a coincidence, man. And then my girl said to me, what about something to do with Felici? Because my name's Jody J. Felici Jones. My dad's name's J. Felici. Oh, okay. But no one really knows that. Never really know. Do you know why though? Because everyone, Is that what Maltese name? Um, was that Greek or something? It, it might be. I have to ask my dad. My yeah, that might dad. be Greek. <laughs> it's because Jody J. Jones was JJJ. Yeah. So I used to try and just miss out the Felici on a childish yeah. thing. Like, I used to just want it to be JJJ. But... Now, as I've got older, I like the name. It's Felici sounds... Well, is that the name, by the way? Felici. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds hard. Yeah, it sound, that's what I'm saying. And when my girl said to me, Felici, I thought, you know what? I didn't think of that. And it sounds good as well. Like, not no disrespect to Jones, but that's just a bait name. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's just a bait respectfully, name. Respectfully, like, respectfully, yeah, respectfully. It's a bait name. And obviously, Felici just sounds a bit different. It sounds cool. And I just thought, I need to add something to it, though. Yeah. Not man. just Felici. I thought London. I grew up in London. So a lot of people's clothing brands just might have a mad name but mine means something to me as well Felici's man my name and London is where I grew up so if I ever think about giving up on the clothing brand I look at Felici that's family yeah man London, where I've come hey, from. I, I like that a lot yeah but it's, I like that a lot it's, it sounds cool and like I said I've always been into clothes and you just meet some decent people as well man make new friends and stuff like that going through the clothing thing and you see with the clothing thing as well I feel like it's a different kind of thing to football as well because sometimes in football there's so many selfish people and you have to be selfish don't get me wrong but in the clothing thing there's a lot of people that have helped me find manufacturers and mm -hmm. stuff like that no, and that's important I've man. had a lot of time to do it but now I'm back to football I'm not going to have as much time but like I said you know that like travelling away games on the coach and stuff sitting there for three hours watching a film no, I'll just be studying that instead no, we love that we love that and obviously I was going to say now going forwards new season like we're not, it's not even a matter of where you see yourself like how are you going to how are you going to tackle it What's your, not to say your game plan defenders don't watch this shit, mm. but what's your what's your um, plan ahead? I'll set myself some goals. Um, like I said, I'm a goal scoring 
like I'm an attacker, midfielder, but I'm, I score goals and create goals. So I'm not going to set myself a mad target. I want this many goals and assists because... You've got to be realistic I'll at be, the end of the day. I'll be, people set themselves 10 goals, 10 assists. I'll be happy with anything. Even if I don't get no goals and assists, as long as I can get play this season, obviously get pick up a few knocks here and yeah. there. But if I can play this season just with, with no knee problems, I'll be, the so happy, I'll be the happiest man on this planet. It's more about the, the minutes. Minutes. The sh- the, yeah. just, that's what I might set myself a goal with, minutes. How many minutes I want to play, how many games I want to try and play and just get through the season. And then if I do get through the season, my goals and assists will take care of itself. I agree with that. But yeah, man, but obviously, thank you for popping up. Um, obviously, appreciate you for coming down. Uh, yeah. You smashed it. Obviously, going forward, bro, I, you know, some people are just blessed, man. The man above has got you, man. Um, don't take yourself too hard or too too lightly, man. Uh, I always say to people, man, like obviously, the way that I see, you know, human beings is that we're all books. We all we all got uh, experiences and, and 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 journeys. Nobody, you can't judge a book by its cover. So if you wanted to give like some free game to, because there's a lot of people that look up to you, man, and I, I love the fact that you have a following. You deserve it because obviously you've been working hard. Like um, not even for not even for just to say for the people that have been in in your shoes and etc. But just going forward. What advice, if you had to say something to the younger lot, like that, I want to be in your position, what's the one thing you're going to tell them? Like I said, man, just keep working hard. Talent is obviously such, like you said to me, with the talent I had. Talent is a massive thing, but hard work will always beat talent, like every single day of the week. And like I said, if you have a chance, my favourite thing, if you have a chance to change your family's life, do it, man. It will be the best feeling ever. Like You can't beat that. But yeah, man, just, just keep grafting, man. Just don't ever give up. Like people like Jamie Vardy made it at 26 years old. So if you've not made it by 2021, just, just keep going, man. Your time your time will come. Love that, man. Well, we love to hear it, people. Thank you for tuning in. I'm still getting used to this, like, outro stuff. I'm so, like, nonchalant with this shit, man. I CBA, but look, man, we here. I got a surprise. No, well, not really a surprise, but July 21st. Tune in. There's something there for you. Um, but yeah man Jody thank you for coming down like I say this is a great shit special though but nothing else I would love to actually just name it that because <laughs> I know our, 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 our head of years our, our school teachers and stuff are going to be very proud of this moment man two great shits and obviously I'm not even going to have to explain myself because this is a bishop language and you know whenever you speak to people about shirts and stuff they get angry what do you mean by that we ain't going to even explain ourselves man but thank you for tuning in man love